Billionaire Paul Tudor Jones' secret to building wealth fast. Now, the American hedge fund manager, billionaire, and wealth creator has built a lot of wealth for himself and for his investors. And when you've studied rich, successful investors and people like I have, you realize that there's not that much different than you and me, but rather they do things a little bit differently. But it's these very small tweaks that make all the difference. So in this video, I'm gonna break down what these small tweaks used by billionaires like Paul Tudor Jones, and I'm gonna show you the successful clues that they've left behind that you can add into your own portfolio. We're gonna look at the sectors and even the assets where you can find these types of returns and investments to turbocharge and build your wealth faster. So stay tuned. All right, now real quick, before we dig in, if you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Moss, and I make these videos because I wanna change the way you think about money, because everything you've learned is wrong. Now, I know it's hard to navigate these markets correctly. It's scary to think about what happens if you get this wrong, and it's also frustrating when you don't understand. So I make these videos to take complex subjects about your money, and I break them down to be easy to understand subjects so that it's actionable, so you can be educated and knowledgeable about what's happening. All right, now if you like these topics and wanna to just help me get them to more people, you can help me. Just take one quick second, click on that like button so the algorithm sends it out to more people, and of course subscribe if you're not already subscribed. All right, now let's go ahead and just jump into it today. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump in. Now I often say that success leaves clues, and so that means if we study the most successful people and find the clues they've left behind, we can have about the same results. And that's exactly what we're breaking down today. Now, first, before we go into the way they're doing it, let's take a look at the old way. The old way doesn't sound too good, does it? Now, um, the old way that it's been done is, you know, the old saying, right? Get a good job or get a good education so you can get a good job so you can save for retirement. And one day you're gonna live off your savings. Well, that doesn't work. So saving for retirement, that's been the old way to do it. People are saving for their retirement by what? Investing into stocks, whether that's through the 401k through your work, their mutual funds, stock markets, et cetera. And so you're investing for retirement into stocks. Now, on average, if you look at the historical return for stocks, you can expect somewhere about a six to 8% return growth on your stocks. Now, that's an average over a long period of time. Of course, there's 15 year periods, there's 25 year periods where you've made nothing or you've even lost. Um, so this is average out over a long period of time. But here's the thing, here's the problem with the old way. What happens when you're doing that, when you're investing into stocks is you're risking 100% of your money to earn about six or 8%. So the risk to reward is risk 100% of my money to earn six or 8% return. That doesn't seem to be that good of an option. As a matter of fact, we can see just how well it has, or I should say has not worked out for people. As a matter of fact, we can see that many boomers have already used up their retirement savings. As a matter of fact, the data leaves out a big chunk of boomers who have no retirement savings whatsoever. As a matter of fact, about half of baby boomers have no savings. So it hasn't worked out too well for people and it's time to get a better strategy. So what do professional investors do? What do the real investors do? The investors like Paul Tudor Jones that have built millions and millions and millions of dollars of wealth, billions of dollars of wealth uh, for themselves and for others. Well, what the big thing they do, and if you've been on my channel for any time, you know I talk about this, they look for something called asymmetric returns. So what, is that, what does that mean, asymmetric? Well, it means there's more upside then there's downsides kind of illustrated in this right here. So right here is the risk. So this is a traditional way. I'm risking 100% to make 6%. I'm risking a lot to make a little. Asymmetric is the difference. Here, I'm risking a little bit to make a lot. That's what professional investors like Paul Tudor Jones do. All right, they want something with more upside than downside. And uh, Paul Tudor Jones has this. And the way that you do this is by having asymmetric information. That means you have to have information that most people don't have. And of course, I wanna give you some of that information. Now we can look and see Paul Tudor Jones. He didn't just happen to make billions of dollars off of luck. <laughs> he certainly didn't do it off of the lottery either. No, instead, he has a strategy. Would you like me to tell you? All right, I'm gonna tell you. So let's look at his strategy here. He's broken it down pretty simply. Um, like most things in life, it's Simple, but not necessarily easy. All right, so the simplicity is the five to one. All right, so what he does is he looks for trades, he looks for investments where he finds an asymmetric risk reward, right, of five to one. That's the number he's looking for. 
five to one, where he's willing to risk $1 to make $5. Now, what were the stocks? I have to bet 100 to make six. It's not the way he does it. He wants to bet one to make five, all right? So the five to one ratio, you can simply be wrong 20% of the time. 20% of the time, you can be completely wrong and you can still make a lot of money, even being wrong one out of five times. As a matter of fact, as he says, his words, you can be a complete imbecile. <laughs> his words, a Colombian imbecile, you can be wrong 80% of the time and you're still not going to lose money if you follow this approach. You can be wrong 80% of the time and you still won't lose money. Now, the key is you combine it with good risk control. All right. So let's go ahead and break this down a little bit. So how do we do that? Well, where do we find those types of opportunities? If the stock market gives me, uh, I have to bet a hundred to make six, where do I find the ones like Paul Tudor Jones where I can bet one to make five? Well, typically we'd find them in new types of companies. So these would be ones like venture capitalists would find. So you hear about these stories in Silicon Valley, things like that. Uh, we'll find them centered around brand new technologies. I guess keyword being new on those. We also find them around explosive assets that provide leverage. So let me show you that. Now we can see, you've heard the stories of these venture capitalists in Silicon Valley that have crushed it. Here we can see what, what WhatsApp did. Um, it, uh, <laughs> It went so big, it turned 60 million into $3 billion. It's a massive, massive number, um, enough to get everybody wanting to get some of these. I don't know why they're still in the stock market making 6%. Um, Snap was the number five, turned 8 million into 2 billion. Wow, that sure would have been nice. Um, and then we can see Alibaba. I tried to jump around a little bit. I didn't just pull the top three. Here's the number eight deal. SoftBank invested 20 million. It was a lot of money, but it became worth 60 billion. So 20 million to 60 billion did really, really good. So as you can see, brand new companies, new technologies or new companies in new technologies, but also explosive assets. So let's take a look at that. All right, so um, Bitcoin, of course, my favorite. I talk about it all the time and I'm sure you're already rolling your eyes and don't worry, I'm gonna show you other assets besides Bitcoin. Um, however, Bitcoin has been the best performing asset in the world for the last 11 years. Um, and not just for the last 11 years, but every year within those years, except for one year, I believe. Um, it's had over plus 5 million percent return, a 5 million percent return. And even if you didn't catch it at the beginning, I didn't either. I didn't get it until 2015, but it's had an average of 200% compounded annual growth rate every single year. Um, and so we can see this, here's Bitcoin over a 10 year, 10 year compound annual growth rate. Here's gold, S&P 500, NASDAQ. The only thing that's done okay is Tesla. Amazon's 33%, but over here, we're at 200% on a 10 year basis. Now about Bitcoin, like I said, we'll talk about some other assets in a second, but about Bitcoin, um, I've done many videos where I've talked about it going to $500,000. I think it's gonna go way higher than that. But uh, JP Morgan, Citibank, um, Kathy Wood from ARK Financial, um, they all see it going for three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. So as it sits today, right now at the time of this recording, it's about $38,000. That means we have more than a 10X upside with a 1X down. You could potentially lose everything. Let's just say, I, I, don't, I don't see that happen. The chance of that happening is very small, but potentially you could lose all just like going in the stocks, right? So 100% downside, but a 1000% upside, a 10X upside with a 1X downside. So that is what we call an asymmetric return. Now, like I said, there's new technologies, new companies, but also explosive assets. So let's take a look at that. So another one that's a, a favorite of me and, and this channel is gold, but that's an asset but in order to get multiple times returns like you'd get on a new technology, gold miners are like startup companies in a sense because the gold miners, typically the small, more exploration and junior miners are basically startup companies. They're going out there to find a new market and tap into an unknown amount of resources and return abnormal size returns, right? So they are startup companies, but it's being done on an age old asset like gold and they give us explosive leverage to gold. So what does that mean? So right now gold was, you know, it shot from about 1500 up to about $2,000 all time high in August of last year. It's come back down all the way down to about 1700 at the time of this recording, it's almost back, back around 1900. 
I think we could see 23, 24, 2,500 sometime this year. That's, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars on gold. Okay, that's one thing. But gold miners allow explosive leverage to gold. So, for example, if gold goes up five hundred dollars an ounce from nineteen hundred to twenty four hundred dollars, okay, that's five hundred bucks an ounce. But if you're a gold miner that has a million ounces of gold in the ground, all of a sudden that's five. <laughs> It's a big return, $500 million return. All right, and we can see in a couple charts that gold miners have always outperformed gold, which of course, like I said, the reason why is because of the leverage that they have. Um, let me pull up a couple charts here so you can see this a little bit better. But here we have in the blue line, we have gold mining stocks. And of course we can see their performance all the way up here versus the yellow metal itself right here. So you buy them for different purposes. The yellow metal is kind of like the insurance you can keep in your safe for that Mad Max scenario, end of world scenario whereas the gold miners can give you these asymmetric returns that professional investors like Paul Tudor Jones are looking for. We can see here, this is uh, the blue line down here is gold. It's barely moved. And then we can see gold miners like Franco Nevada right here or um, Newmont Gold has done very, very well. And the reason why is because of that leverage as the price of gold goes up. So here's a breakdown of Barrett Gold. And so we can see here in the year 2015, um, their cost, what it cost them to get an ounce of gold out of the ground was $830. At the time in 2015, gold was $1,100 an ounce. That means they had a profit of $300 an ounce. But here's the thing, as the price of gold went up from $1,100 to $1,700, which means the price of gold increased by about 50%, their cost of doing business, their cost of goods only went up by 18%. So they went from making 300 bucks an ounce here to making $700 an ounce there. And of course, when you're buying a stock of a company and their profit goes up, what do you think happens? It gets returned to the shareholders of that stock. All right, so we're looking for the right place, just like we'd look for that brand new technology like WhatsApp or Alibaba. We're looking for the right play in the space. Now, just because you're going to mine for gold, you're a junior producer does not mean you're gonna have success. Now, I always start with the team when I'm doing my research. Now, if you've been watching my videos for any time, you know that I talk about this. And the reason why is because success leaves clues. Uh, people that have had success typically have more success. And so when I find people that have had success, and I follow them, it does a lot of that heavy lifting for me. What, I, what do I mean by that? It means that it takes a lot of the work out, right? If they've gone to those companies and I can only focus on those that have the good teams and I don't have to focus on all the others, all right? So I always start with a team. Now, Bitcoin, Bitcoin doesn't have a team. Bitcoin was started in a decentralized manner, but what Bitcoin has done is it's attracted some of the smartest people in the world, the best mindshare. So for example, the largest hedge fund in the world, uh, Ray Dalio's Bridgewater Capital, the CFO just left a couple of weeks ago and went to go work for a Bitcoin company. So we're seeing that. So it doesn't have a team necessarily, but it is attracting some of the best people in the space. But gold miners, they do. They do have teams, obviously. Um, a lot of gold miners have had success at other mining companies and then they start other mining companies. And so the they do have teams and they do make a difference, which is why I always like to start with the team. Now, one such company that I've found that I've been looking at right now is Gold Mountain. Their symbol in the US is GMTMF. And um, Gold Mountain has that leadership team that I'm looking for. The leadership team, like I said, is being that key piece. Now, some of the things that they've done that have really stand out to show how good they are is that they've been able to have they've combined had over 15 different mines that have been successful so they have a long track record of success they've successfully raised over 30 million dollars um, which is also a monumental feat and re most recently they've negotiated this brand new elk gold project now I always like to say the details are the deals in the deal. And so it's all about negotiating these types of deals. Obviously, if you can negotiate better terms, that means more profits. More profits means better stock prices. So I like to look at those types of deals. And this, this Elk Gold deal was an amazing deal. It was a $10 million deal that they negotiated to get for only 10% down. So they didn't have to use all their capital up. And they got the most favorable terms you can get, which is 0% interest. So only a great team could negotiate a deal that good. 
it gives them a price of having gold at about $18 an ounce in the ground. Of course, there's a cost to get out of the ground, but the gold in the ground is about $18 an ounce, which is an amazing price, obviously. And what I also like about the team is that they've retained over 30% of the stock. And so what does that mean? That means they have skin in the game. When you see a team that doesn't own a lot of stock, they don't have a lot of conviction in what they're doing. But when they own a lot of stock, they have skin in the game and they're going to be working their best in order to make sure that there's massive shareholder value returned. Because why? Because they hold the shares themselves, right? So we can see here some details on this elk mine. What I also like about this is it's in a good jurisdiction. There's a lot of talk about gold mines that are in hostile jurisdictions in foreign countries, third world countries that could potentially nationalize the mine, take those mines over. Um, this one's in Canada, just barely over the Washington border, um, just outside of Vancouver right here. So in a very friendly area for gold mines and for uh, mining overall. Now, one of the oldest rules that I've lived by in investing is that you make your money when you buy. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> well, when I was a real estate investor, well, I still am a real estate investor, but for a good part of my career, that's all I did was real estate investing. And it was always make your money when I buy. So what does that mean? I want to buy a $100,000 house, but I want to buy it for $80,000. So that means as soon as I buy it, I'm already making $20,000. What a lot of people do is they get that wrong. They're speculators, right? So they're buying a $100,000 house because they think it could be worth $120,000 in the future. It's a whole different way. So um, it's been said that the stock market is a discounting mechanism. We're trying to buy discounted stock today for what it will be in the future. All right, so that's the lesson that I've learned. Now, so how does that lesson fit in with this company, Gold Mountain? How does it fit in with Gold Mountain right here? Well, they had their PEA, which is their preliminary assessment um, economic assessment report, and it showed that they have a net present value of 191 million Canadian dollars at a price when gold's at $1,600 an ounce. Of course, gold's much higher than that. So they had a net present value of 191 Canadian. Today, it's at about 100 million. So that means we're buying it for less than what the PEA has shown. In addition to that, they have a forecasted production of 50,000 ounces a year at a cost of about $735 an ounce. So if gold's at $2,000 an ounce, they're making over $1,200 of profit per ounce to get out of the ground. So we can buy it at a discount. We're making money when we buy because of this PEA, getting 50,000 ounces out of the ground at a price of about 735 ounces. So making our money when we buy Gold Mountain. Now, the plan that they have is, of course, like any new startup. So if you're looking at cryptocurrencies because you think they have massive upside, they published a white paper, but they've yet to build anything and there's no addressable market. You have a brand new company like WhatsApp and they have this idea for an app, but there's no app and there's no market. And this is a little bit similar, right? It's still early. As a matter of fact, it's pre-production. So they have the land, they have the mine, but they don't have it all coming out of the ground yet. So it is pre-production, which of course adds more risk but it also adds more upside. Now their plan is that they will be producing by November of this year. So it's already coming and they're targeting to be able to pull out hundreds of thousands of ounces per year. It's coming within the next couple of months, we should see that. And they even have a goal to get over a million ounces out of the ground. That's their big milestone. So that's the plan that they have like any white paper on a cryptocurrency or any uh, Silicon Valley venture capitalist is looking at, we have to understand what the roadmap is. But the goal right here is asymmetric gains. And I wanna point back to one thing before we move on or before we finish up actually, is this part, risk adjusted returns. Now remember this is Paul Tudor Jones strategy. Here at the bottom I said, combine it with good risk control. All right, so that is the key piece. Whether this is a small crypto asset, a new cryptocurrency, some white paper, it's a startup company in Silicon Valley, or it's a gold miner position, whatever it may be, you have to, you have to adjust your position based off of risk. There's three ways we, we manage risk. One, with our allocations. You don't go 100% in. Two, you do it through position sizes. Don't put all of that allocation into one gold miner or one cryptocurrency or whatever it may be. And three, you do it with stop losses. So in this position, in this situation, we'd want to limit our position sizes. We have maximum upside, but we still have downside as well. We don't have to go all in because we have that asymmetric upside. Even with a little bit of position, it can be meaningful for our overall portfolio. However, if we go in too heavy 
and it goes down, it's too much risk for our portfolio. So you wanna make sure that you have small positions and you have a risk adjusted portfolio. And that is the secret that Paul Tudor Jones, the billionaire hedge fund manager has given to us. The five to one ratio, I like to think of a 10 to one ratio, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think about Paul Tudor Jones' strategy, asymmetric returns, and getting that type of return he talks about? If you have any questions about it, leave me a question because I like to answer those and I like to engage with conversation with you guys. Other than that, that's all I got. So click on that like button if you like the video because you know I'm working hard for you. If you don't like the video, that's okay. I guess give me a thumbs down, but leave me a comment. Tell me why. I'll make a better video. All right, that's what I got for you today. To your success, I'm out.